Hello. We all have seen pictures like this one, based on the human evolution. I'm reading this book called Sapiens, and the author reminded me that pictures like this are somewhat inaccurate. Not because of this person at the end with the computer, that's pretty much true, but because of the fact that the human evolution process was not just this linear process where one species evolves to the next one. In fact, during different periods in time, different species of humans coexisted, and this diversity helped evolving the humankind to what we are today, Homo sapiens. But what does this have to do with papers and products? Well, I use it to think that the evolution process from a research idea and paper to a product was also a linear process. First, I would have an idea, then I would develop the research, write a paper, and finally, I would build a product. However, now after several years working to build a product out of my research, I realized that this evolution process from paper to product is also not linear. Back in 2013, I was a research intern at MSR and my mentor and I had this idea to help software developers using a technology called program synthesis. Developers often have to perform repetitive code changes like this one. This change was performed to more than 100 locations last week by an engineer who was working on the code base of Microsoft Office. Our idea was pretty simple. The developer would give examples of the changes they want to automate, for instance, these two changes, and our technique would learn from these examples how to automate the rest of the changes. So after my PhD, I worked for several years in this project, and we finally published a paper about it in 2017. Later that year, I came back to Microsoft, now as a researcher, and I thought, well, this is the right time to build a product out of that research. So I put together a prototype, and I went to this meeting to present my idea to engineers and PMs. I was pretty confident that this was the final stage of the evolution. We already had the idea, we did the research, we wrote a paper, now it's just a simple technology transfer. Sounds easy, right? Well, I was pretty wrong. I, I, I was naive, and to show how naive I was, this is the prototype I presented that day. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Why these four boxes? Well, it made total sense to me. Developers would show the code that they want to change here, then would put examples of the change they want to do here, and finally, the tool would produce the suggestions there. Yeah, no one liked this idea. There were many different issues, but the main issue was that developers would have to change their focus from the editor to this new mode to provide examples. And in practice, no one would do this because developers would already would not like to change their focus from the editor where they are usually working on. So this, was, this meeting was pretty frustrating because of that. Uh, but also, at the same time, that discussion with engineers and PMs led to new ideas too. I remember an engineer that said, uh, isn't there a way that the two can learn in the background from observations uh, instead of requiring these explicit examples from developers? If so, then we can remove this barrier for adoption. So we went back to our whiteboards and start working on this, what we call now, modeless program synthesis. But at this time, we were not alone. We were actually working together with engineers, PMs, designers in different product teams. This configuration allow us blending research and engineering. And the code that I was writing for my experiments was actually the code that we were integrating into Visual Studio Intellico. It worked so well that in the second semester of 2019, we presented a new research paper and almost at the same time, a preview version of the tool. But one thing was to present, to evaluate the paper in controlled experiments. Another thing was to see how this new technology would behave in the wild. And in the beginning, we got all sorts of uh, feedback, good and bad. Uh, we had problems with respect to the UI, uh, memory issues, and of course, false positives. But we kept evolving together. 
research and product. And now almost after one year, we just submitted a new research paper and the tool is way more robust. Talking to users now, they seem way happier than before. In fact, remember this change I showed you earlier? It was actually applied using IntelliCode. And this is the feedback the developer gave us last week. I was pleasantly surprised yesterday when VS 2019, they started making these suggestions. I used the feature a hundred times, super cool. So this evolution is making us confident that the tool is ready to be shipped now for millions of users. But is this evolution over? No, like the humankind, we will keep evolving our products and papers. But what I learned over all these years is that this nonlinear model where paper and product coexist and co-evolve leads to this diversity of thoughts and ideas from engineers, researchers, PMs, everyone, users. And this is just a great environment for evolution. So I'm really looking forward to seeing and to being part of what's coming next. Thank you.